So I've been told we are now live. Um, good morning and good afternoon to everyone who is online and joining us today on the Social Club of Medico International from Indonesia, Germany, and of course, between and beyond. The idea of today's event is to bring together friends and partners and interested people to discuss, speak and think together how to not return to the old normal if we take the corona pandemic as a form of rupture in normality. But also, how should the new normality look like? On this panel, we are addressing the question of permanent solidarities and aid. How can transformative, justice-led aid look like during the corona pandemic and beyond? My name is Radu Khaled. I'm the speaker for transformative emergency aid at Medico International and discussing today with our partner, Lian Gogali. Lian Gogali directs the Musantuvo Institute on Pozo Indonesia, which she established in 2008. The Institute is an association of people who work for peace during and after conflicts in the Pozo Regency and its surroundings. Several violent incidents occurred there in the name of religion, behind which were hidden political and economic motives related to the exploitation of the natural resources located there. The victims of these conflicts were, as so often, the poor and marginalized of Pozo. The Musintuvo Institute launched a grassroots women's movement and one of the first steps was critical education work at the Musintuvo Women's School. During the landslides disaster in the neighboring provinces three years ago, the Institute Musintuvo provided emergency aid and had a significant role during the corona pandemic. For her work and success with the Institute Zontuvo, uh, Lian Gogali has received the Coexist Prize from the Coexist Foundation in 2012. And she has also published the book, The Pose of Conflict, Voices of Women and Children Towards Reconciliation and Remembrance in 2009. Thank you so much, Lian, for joining us today from Pozo. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. So to all guests joining us, um, you can write our que your questions and comments in the chat. My colleague, Paul Richter, who is operating backstage, will pass them to me and they will be brought into our discussion. I guess we can start with the first question. <laughs> so um, this is Musantuvo and Medico International have been partners for three years now, um, which means we had the luck to be in dialogue with you also over the period of Corona. Um, last year we were speaking and um, like in the middle of the corona pandemic and you said you were afraid, afraid to lose touch with the communi communities you are working with. Mm. But you also said that uh, the pandemic was a blessing in disguise. Uh, for example, your radio program finally got acknowledged as an emergency radio as well. Yes. So if we draw the balance of one and a half years of pandemic, what are we looking at regarding your work and how do you position your work in such a changing world? Uh, thank you so much, Faradwa, for uh, your questions because this is really uh, important to start the conversation related with uh, the situation right now. Uh, for us, especially, the pandemic uh, provides space to uh, take a break from the routine from the hectic routine activities uh, for see again, to hear again, to reflect on the things we forget. And we, we, we do not realize that we forget in our activities to usually we pick or we, we assume that we want to change the world, but we forget about some things. At least for my organizations, uh, seeing that all along that uh, we always um, talking about human, but we are forget to talk about our uh, nature, our uh, environment as part of the ecosystem of life, ecosystem of our life. So I think it's really like um, important to put again to to have a positions not only talking and not only working uh, as a human for human but also to talk and also to work uh, together and in balancing with the nature, with the uh, environment uh, surround us as part of our uh, fight against all the discriminations, all the uh, injustice, uh, not only in our circumstances, but also in the, in the world. That's how we uh, saw the, 
um, the one uh, one years of pandemic in our organizations. Yeah. So um, you already kind of said the directions in which the second question would go. Um, <laughs> because you position your work as a feminist yeah. organization, right? So the Institute Muson Tuvo started as a grassroots movement. And so what does it mean to have a feminist position while practicing solidarity, and especially during the corona pandemic? Mm. There's a two things come up in, with my mind, and it's also a reflect, it's also come in during our reflections during the pandemic the first one is about the um, the solidarity between the between women and the, the and the nature usually and often time we uh, we always see the the solidarity including in the feminist uh, work as a as a as a, as a sol solidarity with related with the culture social politic between human and forget the nature as a part of the ecosystem of the movement and ecosystem of the life so uh during the pandemic i think our, our organization is especially uh, me myself is like a push ourselves to uh, take a look again to reflect again our relation with the with the nature and then to realize that we we forget about uh so i mean like uh, we often say the, the solidarity for for a human like uh, in the eighth when there is a disaster we always talking about the solidarity with a uh, human with uh with the person with the people who experience the the disaster but we forget to also talking and also reflect and discuss about how our solidarity with the nature uh we so i i think the um the first thing, if we talk about the solidarity, we uh, we want to we want to put the positions that our our solidarity is not only between the human but also with the nature. To take a look again the history, the her story of women uh, with the nature, where the women put the nature as a part of the uh, life system, if, as a part of the ecosystem uh, of life. That's the first one. And the second one, um, the solidarity of the uh, of a woman usually only seen as a same sex, like yeah, like between women, and then it's always a forget, um, not forget, but it's always like ignored that it should also seen as a, as a movement itself. It's like the solidarity is only between the woman and woman, or between the same uh, sex to to like uh, to respond on on the situation but it's uh, like uh, it's often like uh, not seeing as a, as a movement as a part of the uh, of movement itself i think that's how like uh, we we put it the the um, uh the most into as a grassroots woman and now during the pandemic we we take a look again the the her story of women uh, and then uh, how we reflect on the on the nature. I, I hope it's uh, answered the questions. <laughs> yes, it's very, very much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you gave us like the base of how you think and uh, where you envision, from where you envision the world mm. as Ms. Isut Tuvo as a grassroots women's and feminist movement. So can you maybe... Um, tell us a bit more and elaborate a bit more on what you specifically did um, projects. For example, I said a bit of, about the radio that you have established in uh, during the pandemic, that oh, before the pandemic, but got authorized during the pandemic. Um, so if you want to talk a bit more about what you do on, um, on the ground in that sense, the, the projects and the work you do from Institutus in Tuvo in Pozo and beyond. Okay. Yeah, so um, uh, Mosindu Institute um, work with the grassroots community, which uh, means that we are working together as a community. We are not working as an NGO to the community, but we are working together as a community to deal to dealing with this uh, current situation, not only the during the conflict, but also now uh, during the, the pandemic. So uh, that's why for Mosinto, it's uh, it will be really important to to listen 
to the what the uh, what is the grassroots uh, stories and what is the grassroots uh, feeling and their situations during the pandemic and put it this put put it that as a as a part of our reflections that's why uh, we we develops um, uh, uh, programs that we never talk about <laughs> we never think about before uh, for example we are uh, develops the um, uh, uh community small farm uh the community small farm is part of our movement uh, related with the economic solidarity so we are developed the economic solidarity because we think a lot that sometimes when uh, humans talk about the economy it's only the the economic interest like uh, how you how you exploit the the nature to have the big income like that one and then forget to put it the uh, the solidarity on the nature that we often like uh, take a lot uh, from uh, the benefit from from the nature so we develop the community small form to start again to reflect again that uh, we need to we need to um, uh, uh, fix, not fix. I mean, like a, to to make a good relation again with the with the nature and with the food that we uh, consume. So then we know that the food that we consume is come from the nature, and the nature is will be have a, a good relation with us if we taking care of them also and then it start from our backyard it start from our small garden and that's how we developed the community small garden with the 350 uh, farmers in in poso city and now it's growing uh, fast and it's uh, it's uh, start with the uh, way of thinking that we want to like uh, make a solidarity with the nature but we also want that um the community themselves is uh, have a solidarity between them solidarity between them because um uh, not all of the people in 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 poso have uh, access for the internet have access for the informations uh, related with the covid there are so many hawks there's so many mis uh, information related with the COVID, and there is no information of uh, the right information. Even the word that usually the government using to explain about the COVID is like a like a, for us like a, what is this like? So we want to like um, uh, 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 transform again, uh, and then to make a communication again with the with the community using the radio community that's how like we develop the radio community but the radio community is uh, managing by the by the community themselves so the 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 community in the in the villages will report about the station will reflect about their uh, what's happened in their village and it will it it will listening by the other community so they can like uh, respond to each other about about how they should uh, doing uh, something uh, in this uh, uh, in these situations that's how we also develops what we call it uh, people help people <laughs> because we talk sometimes the government doesn't care about us so it's like a uh, people help people with the nature so like uh, that's how like we develop and then the radio the community radio becomes the space to link uh, this community between the between the um between the uh, uh community with between the villages so i think that's uh, two another uh example for us to to develop the program based on the how we uh, have a relation with the nature but also develop a good relation between the uh, human with the between the people with the nature the other things we also um develops what we call cooking for friends where we uh like a uh, connect we collecting uh, food from uh, from uh, from uh, from the people, and then we cooking for anyone who um, who needs uh, during the self guarantee because they have no access uh, with this, and uh, that's how like uh, we also develop uh, together with the community. So it's like uh, for us, it's really like a good uh, space for us to like uh, take. Uh, take back for a while and then reflect again and then what we forget and then uh, how that's how we realize that we, we forget the most important thing in our life not only between the human but also with the the nature so now we are we are, we are um put it together the nature in the same equal position with the uh, human 
to fight against discriminations uh, and 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 other things. And that's how we also when we have uh, like um, uh, demonstrations, we uh, demonstration against the company who exploit the nature. For now, we not only uh, put it uh, put it the the demonstration as a as a human who as a human who demonstrate for the nature, but we calling all the nature together with us, like uh, through the poem, through the uh, theater, through the uh, song, uh, we act together, all the nature together with us to fight against the exploitations. That's how like uh, we put it together, um, uh, this situation. In, so like, that, I, I think it's, <laughs> it's for now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you already kind of, um, explained but also very much portrayed how those different axes that go through the whole world you know so capitalism sexism also the different forms of exploitation how neoliberalism is acting through the communities as well and how you are trying to um together with people for the people and people with the people um act against it and towards a different world actually so um, you said we were speaking in the beginning of the year and you said something that really stayed with me and that I found very interesting and I would like to ask you about it one more time for also um, the, yeah, our, our guests who are hearing. So um, at the beginning of the year we were speaking and you said what happens in Pozo happens in the world. Yes. And so I want to ask you what exactly is happening in Pozo? And how do you envision the world through Pozo? Hmm. Um, uh, this is, will be a thesis. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to make it short, yeah? So uh, <laughs> I will try. So um, I will start with the questions uh, uh, about that. Um, do you realize uh, where your food come from? Where your oil come from? I will make an example, oil, like oil for cooking, I mean, yeah, uh, not for the, not the gasoline, <laughs> oil for the cooking. Uh, the food that uh, uh, put it in the table for, uh, put it in the table, it put it in our table for lunch, for dinner, for breakfast, it's have like a, a long way, long way and long stories before it's come before it's put it in your table. And the stories uh, come from the farmer. And the farmer, uh, it's uh, with their circumstances, like uh, the, the, their nature to, to produce the, the food before, before, the, before it's uh, come in, 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 your, in your table. So um, I think that's also happened in Poso. Like uh, we have now uh, a lot plantation, oil plantations, like uh, palm oil plantations. And the palm oil plantations is exploit our nature. And uh, the exploitation of the nature can give impact for our life here in the village to provide the food in your table, in everyone's table. So uh, like uh, that's how uh, I, I can describe about, uh, we can start with the food that uh, where you come. Uh, where where we our food come from, but also like um, I I can tell you that uh, ten uh, years ago, in the morning of 10, 10, 10 a.m. I mean ten a.m. Uh, we here in Tentena, my place, we cannot take shower because it's so cold. It's so cold. It's like a uh, really cold. The weather, the forest, the nature is so like a uh, good and nice. But um, now, like uh, now, even like 11 p.m., we can still take shower without feeling cold. The the weather, the environment is changed, and it's changed because our consumption, our like productions, like how the humans uh, uh, like uh, needs uh, gasoline for the uh, car, needs a brick for the house, needs needs everything and it's all come from the nature and the nature usually exploits uh, from the small fillets that we don't even know where is it and it's in Poso usually it happens like uh, in Poso for example we have a mining we have also palm oil plantation we have um, 
um, uh, hydroelectronic and it goes to the consumption of the human and it comes from our our place and no one realizes sometimes that all this kind of uh, stories is changed not only the environment but change the social uh, relations and change the culture of the people here um when uh, i i make you ex example for example the weather from 10 a.m and 11 p.m and also for for the food like uh, like that so um uh what's happened in small fillets in in poso that's their nature or their environment exploit for the consume of the people wherever the uh, country is is come from the fillets that that uh that uh experience conflict uh natural resources conflict experience the um, uh the the change the, the environment change uh, like that that's for example uh for the uh environment but the other thing we ha we are here in poso have the um, uh terrorist attack we have the extremism the the extremism group uh which we call as uh, mujahideen indonesia timur is influenced by isis before isis it's influenced by al-qaeda it's a small small city in poso it's have a relations with the uh, big group uh Islamic extremism uh, group in the national level that influence uh, influence and the way how they influence is affect us in the way of someone killed someone's uh, like us not only killed but also the community has a trauma deep trauma and also cannot uh, the other the other impact for example not only have a trauma but also can make a uh, the the farmer here cannot uh, go to the garden because of this uh, group. So like uh, all the things that happen in in the in the international level is influ influenced in some way. Uh, not only about the the group the Islamic group, but also influence in one one family household, mm -hmm. in fam one family household, but also in one individual person like uh, that's that's how it's it's changed so um that's why we we think that we cannot uh, separate or what's happened in poso uh with the other things that's happened in the in the in the world including now happens in afghanistan <laughs> like uh the, the what's happened in afghanistan for example is could in, influence the way how the uh the extremism group here uh like uh get motivated and the motivations to 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 stand for them to exist their their work it could influence the the household of the family here and could influence the individual either like including the environment including the uh policy and this is also related actually with the uh political policy the uh, political policy in indonesia so uh, what's happened in the one small city and uh what's happening in the na international uh it's like it's like uh credits uh, like you know i don't know how to explain in in english but it's like it's really credit relations uh on political social culture with the uh, decision uh making or, or the uh, political police in indonesia that's give impact in our small house like in in indonesia that's uh for example that's why like uh, we think that uh what's happening in poso could influence from other from international world but also what's happened in in poso uh could influence also in other uh other country so you are you done or yes okay for now, <laughs> for now. <laughs> um so you you explained how the world is to be seen and lived also in Pozo and how the relations are so if we are thinking like how you envision the the world so the other direction through Pozo um how would you describe that or how do you envision the world through Pozo in the world um 
for now we think that uh, we cannot work only in one part of the um, uh, issue like peace building or like environment or uh, uh, or like um, uh, fight against women we cannot separate all of this issue in one one only place it's mm -hmm. all related like it's not only related between the issue but between the space between the regions between the between the between the between the villages between the uh, region between the country and between all the world so um so i think like if we want to like a uh, kind of um change the world <laughs> like that if we it's a really big world uh, if we want to like a uh, uh, like a uh, think about this one we cannot like a uh, work separate issue and we cannot work only like in one area to another, another area but we need to like uh, have a relationship strengthen to each other and also relate uh, uh, between each other not not uh, not thinking not working a, not work a program as a, uh, as a one area like a one specific area that's why like uh, we like in small area in Poso have a relation with German with Berlin with Medico and now with other uh, uh, community not only with one issue but with uh, several issues and then we need to like uh, listening we need to like um, uh, learn to each other and we need to like uh, support each other that's how like uh, we can see this one as a part of the movement together. Poso is on, it's only, including my organization, is only small part of this movement. And it could be like a big, if we doing this together, like if we doing like uh, this one uh, in relation with others. Like that's how like I, I think about how we talk, not only talking about the world, but also working as a same planet, as a person, as a people who live in the same planet, who have a same problem, who have who dealing with uh, like you know, uh, like a same situation, wherever we are, uh, whatever our context. I think, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, I would just like to tell our guests um, and our audiences that you can write in the chat your questions. Uh, Paul Richter, my colleague, will pass them to me and we will integrate them in um, our discussion round. So you are also part of, of it, as Lian has said now, in the, gray, in the small um, time frame of the, the panel, at least. Um, so I want to go to a bit of a different uh, question, let's say, that is also related, as you already portrayed so beautifully. Um, in your work, the word, so language, has a very special very special position, as you have once we were speaking about it um, in one of our talks. Um, so it has a very special position in your endeavor. And I want to ask you, how do you see the word, right? So what's its power? And do words help if you want to, like, you know, put it um, a bit pointly? <laughs> Well, yeah. Um, thank you for the questions because, like, uh, we also still um, still on the process on this in the last uh, four years, yeah, to to work on this uh, matter. Uh, but for us, um, until now, we uh, think we take it serious every word, like every every word that we put it together with the community. That's why uh, there is a there is some words that we discuss very serious with the community before between before we use it mm -hmm. like uh, we discuss together what is the meaning what is the history what is the, how we put it in in this activity and so on uh because we think it uh it's really serious uh, why because one word is not only has a power of symbol mm -hmm. but it's a uh, have a power to to remind someone, to, to remind community, to remind individual, to calling back their memories, to explain who they are, to explain their identity. That's how one word 
like it's a uh, cool uh be a power and it's emotional power that could not explain by <laughs> material for someone who using this word or if they were um sent to them it's a uh, calling their memory their her story their history about themselves of about their identity not about only about the identity but also their relations with uh, the surrounding or, or the ecosystem i will give you an example like uh, the way how we found that oh yes this is like a really really important when uh, usually uh, we here in poso have a have a, a word symbol uh, it's called sintu maroso sintu maroso is a local language means uh, power means power or uh, yes means empowering empowering and we also often uh, see in the program yeah or in every like a word in in the, in the, any program that's about empowering women empowering people or all of this uh, kind and we come to think that what exactly is empowering what exactly is power and then we discuss re this is really serious because when we analyze this word of empowering it seems like it's not equal it's like it's like you are come to the county and you are like a hero to help to empower people and it's, this is really need to correct this is really need to reflect on this one otherwise uh, we are we we do it our position like same like a colonial or something like that that's how like uh, we looking for the word who can explain better about about uh, about what we means about what is this and then we come up with the idea with the word after long discussion with the community we come up with the, with the word of pakaroso pakaroso is also local language means strengthening each other so the empowering word is we change to be the strengthening each other because when you empowering people it's not only you empowering people but you also empowering you know like uh, you also grow you also like uh, becomes like a uh, better and and things like that and we also put it this one when we organize people or organize community to advocate case and and so on we do not come as a hero or we do not come as a as a person who would like to help but no we we come to like uh we come together like uh, to put it together and to analyze together and to work together that's how we work as a community and that's how we put the word of empowering and when we talk about this one when we put it the word of pakaroso not sintu maroso for example the people feel as emotional feel involved like a feel that they are not as a victim only <laughs> but they are part of the uh like a survivor or the uh the uh, change maker to to change this one that's how the, it's it's changed but also like a uh, this is a one for example but the, the second example is for example uh, for for us when we uh looking for the word is um when we talk about the name like, yeah we just realized actually that's most like a 90% of the name in poso is related with the nature like uh, our surname like um, uh, our surname is has relate relation with the nature and we forget about that like we forget that we have relation with the with the nature and that's how our our like you know our old person um uh yes our long time like community like um uh give us a message actually that we should not forget our relation with the nature how they put it that through the surname to put it as for example i can tell you that uh, one of the surname uh that's uh, really famous for example in poso is bontinge bontinge is a fish it's endemic fish but it's a surname of the people and there is an, so many like uh, bontinge rare uh, and other like a uh, surname is all the name of the uh, um biodif by the first city in Niposo. and we never think about that and we just realize oh this is actually the word sent us message mm -hmm. that we 
never we should never forget about our relations uh, with the nature and our history our heart story our our long her story with the nature so they have that's how like uh, the power the, of the world but this is also related with the culture how like how like uh, we 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 are now like uh, not using the word of meeting in in the meeting of focused group discussion it's usually come up in the in the program right when you make a program and you put it there there is a focus group discussion and we change that one <laughs> we change with the messy doy it's a local also local language why because when we put it focus group discussion there is an assumption of the people who attend the meeting that they are only come to listen not involved that's first one the second one the space of this room is also put it the table in the front as a speaker and the people the community is in, is only uh, here to listen but when we talk it and the, that's a second one the third one the way how they behave like a what kind of t-shirt what kind of um uh like a dress they're using they becomes like so uh, so formal <laughs> using nice shoes and so on and uh, come and sit like this one to listen but when we call it as a messy door they know that they are part of the the uh, the community who can talk and so on and they come really informal and they can talk also everyone is equal and so on because the word of uh, of messy door is not only meaning as a meeting not but it's have a meaning that we we have some issue to discuss together and we need to uh solve this together like the, like this one so maybe that's um how we put it hopefully not too long explanation <laughs> no, 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 no. oh i can hear myself paul i think, Paul, I think we have some um, technical issue can you hear me Lian? Okay, now it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, great. great. Oh, now it's done again. Uh, Paul? Okay, Paul is working on it. Um, so you can continue. Thank you, Paul, for your message. So, um, yes, and you also said that you don't want to use the words and the language of the government, for example. Yeah. So that you also are trying to um, oh, you want to elaborate on that, maybe? Yeah. yeah so, like, uh, I would like to add this on this one because it, uh, uh, in our uh, point of view, the word that usually using by the government has a political meaning. It has a political uh, power, and the political power is suppress people so to to see people as a as a as a community who need to listen only. There is no dialogue. There is no space, and and so on. So and then, uh, put it. Sometimes it's only only put it person, as a, or or community as an asset, as an asset or as an object of discussion, or as an object of uh, of the topic, not as a as a human, uh, who have the uh, the dignity. Who have the sovereignty on the economic, social, and who have the identity? So um, that's how uh, we we take that uh, the word of the government usually uh, sending us a political message uh, with this kind of um, uh, message, with this kind of like uh, not only message and assumptions, but also uh, uh, meaning behind that one. Uh, I, I can I can tell you for example like uh, when when the when the government here um, using the word of poor like uh, the poor community poor community or we call it here miskin in Indonesia language poor community it's already categorized by the government with several indicator the poor community means one the roof is uh, from not from a nice thing their uh, wall is not nice their uh, floor is not nice they have no car they have no bicycle they have no television they have no fridge and things like that that's kind of indicator it's complete in the world of poor 
by the government. But when you put it together with the community, there has different meaning on the poor uh, with uh, or, or rich with the with the uh, with the community. For example, like when you say that um, uh, uh, rich, it means that you have a garden, nice garden. You have uh, your own food without even needs to buy. You have uh, like um, you you relations, good relations with the with the uh, with your neighbor and, and so on. So like uh, uh, there's a meaning, a political meaning on the word that we should really like uh, take a look again because otherwise we do not aware about this and it's intimidating. It's uh, manipulating. It's like the word when have the political meaning it's manipulating it's uh, intimidating a uh, community and the people not as human who have a dignity and identity but as an ob object as an asset so we want to like uh, see the world also as a part of our method to uh take back our take back or yeah uh, take back again uh our our uh, uh, dignity uh, as a as a human, but also this is not only as a human but also with the nature. Um, uh, may I like uh, keep continue or <laughs> should I stop for now? No, no, please continue. This uh, is technical. What's happening on the chat? Okay. Yes. So, um, like, uh, what I mean is like. Um, the language is also sometimes discriminate <laughs> sorry discriminate the the uh have a discrimination discriminate against the the nature and environment yeah uh what i mean is like uh, uh usually uh it's like uh put it put it uh the nature and uh, the biodiversity only as an object um below the human uh like that so like i think like it's really needs to um reflect again on uh, on the word every time uh the governments uh choose the word for example during the pandemic uh during the pandemic um the government indonesian government for example using the word of new normal new normal to explain about new habits that we need to do it uh, to um, to ad ad adjust with the pandemic, but the word of the new normal is in English. New normal is like a literally new normal, <laughs> with for Indonesia where we have seven hundred small local language, but they choose to have the new normal as a representative for the word to adjust this one. So it's like it's really like doesn't care at all about the uh, the the community who listen who who want to learn about this language and it's also like a like it it looks like it's take the community from their roots when they are using this kind of language when they are using the this kind of the the uh, roots in other side it's put it uh it's it's not reflect on the why this uh pandemic happened relate with the net with the nature with the environment that we you know like uh this is actually because we doesn't care about our environment and environment strike back to us and there is no discussion on that it's only like discussion about like how we deal with this one how the economic should still grow during the pandemic it's like there is no space to like a uh, take back again like a uh, take a look back again the why this is happened and then what, what should we need to change i think i will stop with this for now um yes and this is also going to the next question but before i pose it uh, i would also like to say that we are having 15 minutes now left or 16 to be very specific or very precise. Um, and you can um, every time, uh, all the time, write your questions in the chat. Um, so, Lian, with the question 
of new normal, right? But beyond the new normal of the Indonesian government, of course, uh, our new normal, or our uh, post-corona world. Um, so what do you hope for the post-corona world? If, if, of course, if we think that corona is going to go away at some point, we don't know. But um, if we think about the post-corona world, um, where does Institute Nizom Tuvo stand in it? Um, and especially in respect to the, as you already have said, and already have elaborated on, to the accelerating ecological devastation, like the climate crisis, for example. So um, actually for now, like a Musintu um, a stand that um, we want, want to, like a, we want to learn more about uh, any, like, we want to learn more about the biodiversity, about the environment that we live in. We want to learn more about the world we live in, with, including with any specific biodiversity that's really small that we don't care, like a, all the endemic that we never care about. We want to, we want to learn more about about this, and we want to like. Um, respect on this one so before we respect we really want to learn to make us not left the environment behind in this our uh, uh um fight with the situations we don't want to make the nature the biodiversity left behind on our uh, on our uh, fight not only to learn more about the nature to learn more about the environment because we always like forget about that and we sometimes too arrogant to acknowledge that that as a human yeah as human that we have power on the environment that we can do anything with the environment that they are only like um only like a object that we can do anything that we that's why we in the first step we want to learn more we want to like listen more a listen more uh, for any specific endemic including around us that's why now like uh, we we uh we put it together this one and then uh, to support this one we want also to learn our position is like to put it the culture movement as a part of our method because it's it would be more like um, respect on the nature like uh, we put it together nature as a part of our partner to fight uh, for the uh, discrimination exploitation climate change so we do not put human our organization in front of the nature or environment. We want to like uh, put it together, uh, put it together with us. We want to learn and then, then uh, put it together on our fights. That's uh, uh, how most into positions. That's why now like uh, we we started to um, uh, calling, calling back our memory actually on the nature in, in Poso by uh, writing uh, books uh, have a research about the biodiversity, what is exactly one individual specific endemic biodiversity, the influence with us here, like uh, uh, how the how the one specific small endemic can, if they, if they lost, if they gone, how it's changed our life. We want to like uh, do all of these things before it's too, before it's too late. So we don't want it too late to start. So we want to make sure that we listen more, we learn more, and we put it together and enrollment as a part of our partner on the um, on the uh, uh, on the fight on uh, everything that we are fight for, uh, especially for the uh, sovereignty of the people on economic, social, and politics. So everything is like uh, including the culture, social, economic, and political. Uh, uh, point of view, we want to do together by listening more, by um, by learn more, and uh, working together with the nature and environment. The way how we do that is like uh, not only like um, 
uh, by writing, by listening more, but also we, for example, like we are now doing like um, the demonstration together with the nature that we put it, the nature as a as a as a subject who can speak also speak by the sign like a who can uh, the the uh, the nature that can send us a sign uh, to send message for example the um, the floods uh, the, the yeah for example the floods yeah it's it's, it's a message for us like uh, about uh, things that we need to change we need to reflect on So um, actually, we have also a question from the audience, from uh, Martina. Uh, unfortunately, the chat doesn't show me a um, surname. So uh, she's asking, were you invited by the government to provide input about the situation uh, in your community during the pandemic? Hmm. We we will, we will, we like to, <laughs> but <laughs> but we have a different um, different uh, perspective on on uh, on the pandemic and different method. Unfortunately, uh, for example, like um, the governments here only care about the uh, uh, political party, only care even like uh, they push to have an election during the the uh, hard time of the pandemic they 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 say they don't really care about the health system that's why like uh, we we are not inviting in terms of the discussion but we are inviting in terms of the analysis together and give informations uh, the right informations because the government here is on also not really aware about the situations uh, that's i that's uh, i think i could i could say Yeah, and as you said, you are talking in two different languages now. I mean, also words in that sense. So I have a, another question um, from uh, Torben, who is asking, um, so Lian, you talked about empowerment and the vision of not empowering, but to talk, work and learn together. So how can people and organizations from Germany work like this and at the same time work against global injustice? What should we? What should they do at least? And what's the best vision? I guess, um, Torben. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for asking me. This is kind of like proof. Sorry, it's a really raining hard thing outside my house. So I hope my voice can be heard. So um, it's really like a, a great questions. Thank you so much for a question about this. I heard about the floods in Germany. And I'm worried about this one. I think it's a sign. It's a sign that's sent by the nature for us, for Germany, for uh, for the government, for the any community in Germany to reflect against about uh, about the the relations, the relation between the human with the nature and environment. That, but also how we we have a vision on development with the nature. And um, the way how we did, I, I think it's really like I, for from our uh, experience, we usually are trying to have a more uh, research about uh, what was happening in the uh, geospatial and social spatial things. So uh, I can say like this one: every community or every regions would like to learn about the geospatial, about what what the earth, what the circumstances, what the um, uh, environment talk to them. So based on the geospatial, because we need to do the geospatial and uh, geospatial things, that's why, uh, that's how we, we learn from the nature about like a, um, and also we can take a look again the history the the story the history of the nature in our area so that we can learn to make a position to to make position on the uh, on the um, uh, on how we develop our uh, region 
on how we develop our community. That's the first thing. The second one, I think, is like uh, in solidarity because we talk about how we have a solidarity between country, <laughs> between country and so on. I think we need to have a critical thinking uh, about where they put in their table in our dinner, in our uh, lunch and breakfast come from. Is it come from the equal story, his story, her story of the nature or not? Like, uh, for example, like um, Indonesia is really like uh, Indonesia land forest is really like uh, on really hard situation now because of the palm oil plantations. Like uh, the things that we can do it around the world is like a blacklist or stop the palm oil plantations because if they if they consume is still big so there is will be more land there will be more forests will cutting in in any like a villages in any uh, area in 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 indonesia and now it's expand to sulawesi to expand in my regions because we they, because the consume of the people for the palm oil plantations is too big and government in indonesia only want the benefits of economic benefits by exploit the nature so i will pretty soon like uh, i think like uh, that's a really like small things that we can do it together uh to have a critical thinking not only what you consume but what you what you uh what you product uh, yeah what you consume not only the food but also yeah, the dress and things like that this is will be really helps for us in small town in small area in the in the villages maybe it's not directly but it will be really hard so apropos uh blacklisting the palm oil industry um i have a question from me sam who is asking um a bit of a pointed question i would say do we really need to include our fight in our culture frame have we been framing all of our problems on a global scale like capitalism climate change and other issues culturally don't you think we need more political actions? And then he continues to ask, we, we, have seen, uh, we have seen in the recent time from Germany how a union like trade union or train unions um, can put pressure. Don't we need such actions in order to overpass the hearing phase and um, the, the current phase and to start taking more efficient actions? Yes, thank you uh, for for these uh, questions because that's exactly we want to like uh, do together because as I had told before that we cannot separate issues, we cannot separate um, methods. We need to do many different methods and many different approach uh, to do it together, and we cannot do it alone here in Poso. But you need also to do it there in in germany with the political action including like for example i really like uh, like i really de like the idea to ban <laughs> to ban the palm oil plantation in europe including german so there is no will be the consume for the palm uh, oil plantations including <coughs> the uh, including the 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 gasoline yeah uh, the gasoline that we need uh, uh, and it needs to in it not only needs in the in the uh, grassroots thing but we need to negotiate also in the political political side which is for us as a, a small organizations we cannot do that but we can make an example to support the idea to bring it as a part of the political negotiations in the government in germany or in other country uh, to make uh, to make sure that every uh, every political actions it will be have influence in every uh, community and villages and individual uh, who they uh, where they land exploit by the nature so like um maybe like uh it, this will be really really helpful to to do that to do a difference difference way 
while we do it here uh, because it's really small things uh, we trying to uh, to start here but we do really need a support in political action uh, because it's really like a political um, like a political decision making also influence uh, uh, the way how we do it for example now our area is like exploited by uh, our lake we have a lake poso here and our lake is exploited by the uh, the former vice president of indonesia for the hydropower energy and hydro, uh, i think we also need to uh, uh, support and to pressure uh, for the energy to to have the sustainable and renewable energy not using the the uh, water or the uh, the other not uh, healthy uh, for the environment uh, to push in the in the political actions to to make an agreement uh, like a Paris agreement is also one of the example that could influence really uh, with with us here uh, so everything we can uh, we take, can do that's why like uh, what happened in Poso it will be like a uh, like a not only in Poso uh, can solve. We need everyone can uh, do it together their part in, in the in the other area, including in Germany, in your household, in your political decision, in your political uh, agreement, including uh, the leader that you choose. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> like that one. So for that, as Lian would say, I think that the trade union, what's happening in the trade union is actually also connected to what's happening in Pozo. Yeah. Um, as your example, um, Wissam. So with this note on the connectedness of the world, um, thank you very, very much, Lian Gogali, for joining us today, for giving us an hour of your time um, during all of these endeavors. Um, I would like to thank also our uh, audiences for the questions, for listening to us, for joining us. Um, the next panel is going to be our final discussion. Um, you can, uh, Paul Richter will uh, post in the chat um, our final discussion, or as you see here, also blended, um, is critical thinking in the world crisis. So it's very much uh, <laughs> to um, speaking to what you've been speaking about now. Um, you will be joining with Anna Jung, um, our global health uh, speaker, Dr. Thomas Rodolf Seibert, a human rights in Afghanistan speaker, and Professor Stefan Lessenich. Um, sociologists at the Good University in Frankfurt. So once again, thank you very much um, and see you soon, I hope. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>